Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to talk about the biggest area of concern for this Ohio State football team in the coming years, not just in 2022. Now, I've detailed the defense, what it's expected to be, uh, you know, the safety position. If I were to pick one out in terms of my biggest area of concern would be for the defense, it'd be the safety spot. I understand people are worried about the linebackers, things like that. I think Steel Chambers, Eichenberg, and maybe even C.J. Hicks later in the season will step up. They've also got decent depth with Cody Simon there as well. But guys, from a defensive perspective, my biggest concern is the safety. But overall, for the entire roster, you know, if you've been following college football, Ohio State recruiting in specific, it's the offensive tackle position. And guys, this coming year, it should be okay. Paris Johnson Jr., there's a big reliance on him to live up to his five-star hype, of course, at the left tackle position. Many people projecting him to be a top 10, even top 5 draft pick. Of course, we hope that's the case, but due to the Ohio State offensive tackle recruiting or lack thereof, there is a major need at the offensive tackle position if Paris Johnson Jr. is a one and done at left tackle, meaning he starts this year at left tackle and then he goes off to the NFL. A lot of people are projecting it. Obviously, if it happens, that's good because that means he had a great year, and we all hope he has a great year. Ohio State, if they're going to win the national title, they need an elite offensive line. I am not concerned at all about the guards. Donovan Jackson should be unbelievable. He was the number one overall guard, top 10 overall player in 247 sports rankings back in the class of 2021, so he's a sophomore now, In or maybe he's a... Maybe he's a redshirt freshman. Either way, Donovan Jackson is going to be great at guard. And then you've got Jones at the other tackle. He's got experience at right tackle. He should be fine. Paris Johnson Jr., what can he do? But guys, moving forward, there's a big elephant in the room. We all don't want to talk about it. It's the offensive tackle recruiting. I think the last time Ohio State landed an elite offensive out-of-state tackle uh, is NPF, Nicholas petit Ferrari back in the 2019 class, and that was mainly due to Greg Schiano knowing his uh, NPF's head coach or something like that. But either way, it's a major concern. It's a major issue. You look back on other recruitments, the J.C. Latham thing, that was an issue. Um, as far as I know about that whole recruitment, without the pandemic, J.C. Latham, if you guys don't know him, he's basically like the number two overall player from the class of 2021. He would have been a Buckeye without the pandemic situation. He was going to make his decision and choose between Ohio State and LSU in March. The whole shutdown happened. Apparently his mom got obsessed with Saban or something and you know, he, he lived with his mom and she got in his ear and it was a whole big thing, but he had a final two of Ohio State and LSU and he was going to choose Ohio State. This is a kid originally from Wisconsin and he turned into this super recruit, ended up going to Alabama, committing there. It was a major loss for Ohio State, but that's, that's in the past. It's whatever at this point. I wanted to take a look at the overall offensive line depth for the Buckeyes and Moving forward, if Paris Johnson Jr. does head off to the NFL after this year, which theoretically is probably the best case scenario because we want Paris to play unbelievably well at the left tackle position. It's one of the most important positions in the offense. And if he's in a situation where he becomes a first round pick, it's because he had a great year at left tackle. Now, I guess you can say the best case scenario would be for him to play great and then say, I, I just want to come back to Ohio State. The likeliness of that is if he plays great, he's going to the NFL and he's a top 10 pick or at least the first round pick. So looking at the offensive tackle, the seniors, obviously Jones starting at right tackle. I think he's a fine right tackle. No issues there. He has experiences. He has experience. Uh, the juniors, obviously Paris Johnson Jr., the five star. Other than that, all those other three players, those three junior tackles, I, I personally don't think they're Ohio State caliber. Those are guys that the Buckeyes had to fall back on 
and I believe they're all in-state players, or I think two of them are in-state and the other kid's from Michigan, but they're all players. If Ohio State, and if Stud, you know, we know Ohio State's former offensive line coach, if they were recruiting at an elite, elite level, Ohio State wouldn't even know the names of these kids. But this is how recruiting goes. If you're new to recruiting, when they're taking kids like this at the end of the cycle, when they're extending offers, it's due to the fact that they missed on all of their top targets and they just got to get someone. You know, and, and these kids, you can say they're projects. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. The likeliness of these kids ever being anything at Ohio State is very small. And that's not me hating on these kids. They could probably, you know, some of these kids could, could turn out to be good offensive tackles at other schools, but. When it comes to Ohio State, uh, it's just not going to happen. I don't know why they have Donovan Jackson listed as a tackle. He is a guard. Now, due to Ohio State's poor offensive tackle recruiting, there's been rumors that Ohio State might try Donovan Jackson at tackle, which I completely dislike. This kid is going to be a superstar guard. Don't mess with his position. Just because we can't recruit tackles, let's not ruin Donovan Jackson's career Maybe that's a little overdramatic, but still, I would rather have an elite guard than playing him out of position. It just, you know, just the hope, I'll be honest, the elephant is, let's hope Ohio State can somehow land an elite transfer portal kid. And it's so tough, especially offensive tackle, relying on the transfer portal, but I think that's what Ryan Day is hoping. Either one of these projects steps up, or Ohio State lands an elite um an elite uh, transfer portal tackle. And then you take a look at the other sophomores. Both of those kids, uh, Chris, Chrisman is more of a guard, and Mikowski is a kid. Maybe he's a type of kid that has a little bit higher of an upside. There's been talks he might be able to step on in. Jacoby is already transferred. So, yeah, this is not updated. J Ryan Jacoby, I think, is on Minnesota now. And then George Fitzpatrick is another kind of a high upside tackle that... They had to take because they missed on other guys. And then you've got Miles Walker. And I believe they, I guess they have Luke Montgomery listed as a guard here. Now, we need Luke Montgomery to be a tackle because the 2022 offensive tackle class, again, there's major issues with it. There's just Ohio State's inability to, to land out of state elite offensive tackles. It is a major concern, and that's why the offensive tackle position is the biggest concern. The guards and the centers, it's whatever, it's fine, it's not a big deal. You can recruit in-state four-stars, but theoretically, you need the elite tackles. You look at a team like Alabama and the way they recruit offensive tackles, I'm not saying it needs to be that level, but I think at minimum, one you know, very good out-of-state offensive tackle per year minimum because normally in-state is not going to have more than one elite offensive lineman it's just not especially from the tackle position and we don't even know if Luke Montgomery is going to be a tackle uh, anyways so that is why I'm so concerned about the offensive tackles the best case scenario I would say next year there you know you get a transfer portal kid and that, but relying on that is so tough. If you're a program like Ohio State, you don't want to have to do that. But Paris Johnson Jr., this year, as long as Paris Johnson Jr. lives up to the billing, they should be fine at the tackle positions. Next year, if he goes to the NFL, there's going to be problems unless they're able to land a transfer portal guy or one of these lower tier guys steps up. But if you're Ohio State, you don't want to be in the position where you're relying on a especially an offensive tackle, you know, to outperform his recruiting ranking. Like, you're relying on a three-star to completely... That's what Purdue does, right? That's what Northwestern does. If you're Ohio State, you should not be doing that. So that's why I think they're hoping the transfer portal next year will be a place where they can really utilize it and get an elite transfer. Now, they went after Eli Ricks. They got outbid by Alabama at the cornerback position. I think the cornerback position is going to be fine for the Buckeyes with Denzel Burke. You've got Cam Brown, who's a slot corner, and then you've got Jordan Hancock and J.K. Johnson. I am not worried about the cornerback position. I'm more worried about the safety position, honestly, because I am not the biggest fan of Ronnie Hickman. And hopefully Josh Proctor can stay healthy. He has a tackling issue where 
I mean, his technique, he just throws himself at defenders, That's or, or he throws himself at, like, receivers or whatever. That's how he gets injured, because he doesn't have any technique. So, hopefully, Josh Proctor can stay healthy, um, and then maybe, you know, Ronnie Hickman, I just do not like very much. I think he's not an impact player, personally, in my opinion. Taking a look at the safeties overall, uh, Bryson Shaw is not even on the, the team anymore. He transferred... To USC, I believe that's where he transferred to. Uh, Ranson, it to me is just another guy. Johnson, the sophomore, is kind of a depth piece. So Stokes is someone they're really high on, but asking a true freshman to come in, you know, and play a safety position, that's just not going to happen. I guess they have Dunn listed as an athlete. That's why he's not here. So uh, Jansen Dunn could be a guy who was injured last year. He was a true freshman last year injured the entire year, but he's a guy that I would love to see get some run at safety personally, but when it comes to the position that I'm most worried about, you know, 2022, you would probably, for me, I'd probably say as long as Paris Johnson Jr. lives up to it, I'm really not worried about the offensive line. I'm more worried about the safeties. I know a lot of people say linebacker, whatever, but I think Ohio State's set up to have a really good year with their linebackers as long as Steel Chambers breaks out, Tommy Eichenberg. You've got depth there with Cody Simon and then C.J. Hicks and others. Um, you know, Court Williams as well. So there's a lot of depth at the linebacker position. I would be more worried about the safeties, not worried about the cornerbacks. You've got a stud, true sophomore in Denzel Burke. And then, of course, the defensive line. I'm thinking the defensive line could be the best in the nation with Tyleek Williams, with Michael Hall Jr., and then the pass rusher, Zach Harrison, returning. You've got JTT. You've got Jack Sawyer. The depth there is insane. So if I'm looking at the defense, I am most worried about the safety position. And then from an offensive perspective, it obviously it has to be the offensive line. The QB is the current Heisman favorite. The running back's one of the best in the nation. They have the best receiver room in the nation. It's a process of elimination, but really the offense is going to be the best in all of college football. My thing is next year, if Paris Johnson goes to the NFL, you, you lose Jones as well, your other tackle. You've got to replace both of those guys. They've got guys on the roster good enough to be a, a right tackle. I don't know if they've got guys that can slide right in to be a left tackle. Can they replace both of their tackles with what they currently have recruited? Remember, they had to fire their offensive coach because he was such a bad recruiter. Um, and, you know, I, I agree that Ryan Day made the right move firing Stud. At some point, enough is enough. you got to get rid of him. Uh, he was an okay, you know, in-game coach, I guess. I mean, Ohio State's offensive line last year, I have no clue what the strategy was, why they were playing tackles at guards. They were like, oh yeah, we're just going to play the four best players, but pl being a guard is completely different than being a tackle. You've got to have a different body. You've got to be more bulked up. No clue what they were doing. It just doesn't work. And they made a Ryan Day made a good move firing stud. Um, so we will see if Ohio State again in 2022 the offensive tackle recruiting is, or excuse me, 2023. Yeah, 2023 the offensive tackle recruiting is not looking the best. If Luke Montgomery can turn into elite tackle, into an elite tackle, that will help significantly. But again, it's really the out of state problems for Ohio State. The last time Ohio State landed an elite out of state offensive tackle. I think it is NPF. If I, you know, like, and that was even a situation where Ohio State came out of nowhere for NPF. Um, and, you know, they were leading forever for Jackson Carmen. And the whole Jackson Carmen situation was really weird, where he's an in state guy from mid the middle of Ohio. And apparently, when he was making his announcement, like a few hours before, he called Urban, and Urban was so pissed, he threw his phone at the wall. That's what was. That was the rumor, and they ended up being able to pivot and get NPF, who we're not going to say, I don't think NPF was a letdown for Ohio State. I think we were kind of hoping he was going to be this crazy elite offensive tackle, and he ended up being, what was he, a late second round pick in the draft? I mean, he was serviceable. Uh, I like NPF. He's a great, he's a really great dude. He's really smart, too. I'm not trying to badmouth NPF. He was a great Buckeye. I'm just saying, I think people thought he was going to be I think it was like the number seven player overall in the nation. And guys, my point overall is 
they're going to be so good this year. I'm just saying in the future, the offensive line, especially the offensive tackles, the guards or whatever, you know, Donovan Jackson's going to be amazing the next two years at guard. But it comes a point where it's like the tackle recruiting is so bad. They've been talking, do we maybe push Donovan Jackson out to be a tackle, which is not his natural position. He's not big enough or tall enough to be an ideal tackle. Could he be serviceable as a tackle? Maybe. But this is an all- Big Ten type guard. First team all Big Ten type guard, Donovan Jackson. He's a superstar. There's, you know, the center, the guards. I'm not worried about that. It is the tackle recruiting. That is what I'm most concerned about. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.